video off by saying I, w I know I was out for a hot minute and boy do I now have content to make. I have gotten sick but I am very happy to return with more content to make because it was quite the drought beforehand. <coughs> so to start it off because it's the end of the season and I've gotten her I'll make the review for anyone else who's gotten her. The Legends Pass Free Monster Kiridar Pilgrim with one of the most OP talents. Um, I think it's going to be really meta, so you definitely want to pick her up and do her era saga. That'll be good at any point, even if this is outdated when you see it. <coughs> she is a galactic nature and metal monster. Kiridar is known for saving animals and monsters from ill-fated ill -fated planets and giving them a family in her space in her space arc. And but she's known for her sense of justice. Those who are corrupt or sneaky or unfair don't like her as much as the rest, knowing that Kiridar will call them out on their shady business. So she is, like, supposed to be a reflection of, like, nature activists? Um, pretty cool. Her finisher, N Natura's Recall, deals moderate nature damage to all enemies, applies stun, toxins, and poison. Uh, she can't do any dots herself, so doing another damage multiplying dot with two dots and a one turn de denial, the moderate damage isn't really better than her normal AoE, but the effects make the finisher really useful. She's actually got a fantastic trait, starting off with immune to possession. Sadly, she is one of those monsters who has an immune to possession, not immune to possession and corruption. So if Lord Heyman decides to possess you, um, you'll have the immunity, but if Lord Pumpseed decided to, like, do corruption or any one of the meta monsters who can do corruption, you know, random control is really popular, uh, you will fall victim to that, so, uh, but yeah, you have an immunity to possession, which Heyman is pretty powerful, so it's nice to have that immunity. Second is an amazing trait, one of my favorites, because it's better than Hardened. But, you know, they don't like going all out for monsters, so it's good to have at least something. And when it's better than Hardened, it's tough. All Satisfacts have a 35% less accuracy against it. This works annoyingly well. Like, the amount of times you'll miss on someone with tough, it's so annoying. It's a lot better than certain immunities, because, hey, let's say you fight Kiridar, and you don't have torture immunity, which, <laughs> shock alert, she does, which is amazing. But there's a good chance the tortures and the controls that say Teddy Bomb tries to hit on you, none of them land, so really useful, tough. And then rank 3, status caster, um, area torture immunity. This is just fantastic, that reminds me a lot of Elvira in the sense where she's a good attacker who has a team, like, uh, a team immune to torture immunity instead of just herself, like someone like Queen Zara, who she looks a lot like you know for obvious reasons and that is just amazing <laughs> um you can start off the battle especially for nature monsters they have it worse like the worst because fire and ignite like burning and ignite are the two most common i feel like dots to run into and they instantly destroy any nature monsters so having an, a, a torture immunity in this torture heavy meta right now really good so let's go to her skills and by the way, I do want to say I'll have her um, Era Saga video out as soon as I can. So, first I'll go over her relics. Really great, and it reflects her trait, and not really her skill set, because her skill set doesn't really go along with um, the whole attack and support. But she has a banner, so you can have your stamina covered forever. I'm doing Invengars, just because, you know. And then she can do a sword to help her damage output, which further emphasizes how she's an attacker. Now, she does have a few support moves. I'll go over here. First, Home Seeking. Gives low nature damage to all enemies. Zero cooldown, 20 stamina. Alright, Stray Rescuer. Applies a damage boost to itself. Zero cooldown, zero stamina. I can see an argument for this. This will keep her permanently stronger. But realistically you'd only use this if you had zero stamina and zero cooldown and you'd rather recharge than have a slight damage boost because every turn matters and you got to be able to do a lot more than just one damage boost with a turn um 
animal power. Deals moderate nature damage to one enemy, and it's pretty high. That looks about 40, maybe 45 nature damage to one enemy. Applies nature weakness to one enemy. So that is really good. That'll multiply her great nature damage output. <coughs> Which, funnily enough, she doesn't really have much metal going on here. On a one turn cooldown, 36 stamina. I'd consider running this because her moves are all two turn stamina and high um two turn cooldown and high stamina or above so maybe you run this animal power instead of adam burrow's dedication i think i will but i just want to have it on second we got earwings teachings applies double damage and true vision to one ally so you give yourself double damage you give yourself true vision uh, well, you could do this to any ally, pretend that she's a support monster, but a bad double damage and a bad, um, damage boost is not anything to brag or write home about. So, yeah, maybe you run this, uh, it could be a self-buffing skill for when she can't recharge, or, like, when she can't attack, because she only really has attacking in her main skill set, no healing like I thought she might have. And then Attenborough's dedication. Oh, I just went over that, right? Yeah, it's just an immunity to blind and damage boost. Maybe you run it just to have that immunity to blind. Uh, I don't get why you would. It's a decent immunity, but you'd never want it on purpose. Um, Yeah, I think for sure if you run any of these metal support moves that she has, Irewing's teachings on a one-turn cooldown, 35 stamina, is the best one to have because it's on a one-turn cooldown doesn't take too much stamina it guarantees you won't miss your nature weakness move um but oh that's why i'm doing bounty hunt right now so i think i'm considering using her so i'm checking this out uh, no i'm not I'm not using her yet okay then proud and primal <laughs> i like that deals moderate nature damage to one enemy then all this is a classic move um you know to one then all i don't know if the damage output is 45 to one then 45 to all so it's almost like a massive or if it's 20 it's 45 to one 25 to all um i've played around with her but i really can't tell so i'll try and learn what i play with her next iron wings teachings as i said one of her good moves double damage true vision to herself you can give it to any ally but you really should only be giving it to yourself one attacker per team on one turn quote out 35 stamina Fauna's Force deals moderate nature damage to all enemies, applies nature weakness. So this is just to make the whole team weak so that you can use some of your great nature damage output. Ideally, you cycle back into this. Or you do um, Animalia's Leader deals insane nature damage to one ally. No, to one... Oh my god, ally. To one enemy. That is about, whoa, like 80, 95 damage. And it's only on 55 stamina. There are some monsters who can't do insane damage unless they spend a hundred like 20 stamina so that is amazing on a two turn cooldown so it's pretty thick on stamina but it's not nearly as high as like we've seen before with monsters like um Elfira. so yeah great great damage output like possibilities and i'll show that off here so do 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 let's pick a team what do we want um well the question first is what does she do she does weakness and she does attacking so we want a denier no not la mama she's too powerful monk and we want do 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 someone like lord hey man <laughs> why not right and I do have him at 115. I said I'd give him a video on every rank, but I think I'm just going to do a video when he's at 120 and he has all moves unlocked because I have a lot of videos to make and it seems like I can't go back now. He's already at 115. But yeah. So, let's see. First, you would do possession, which look at that. The immunity he has that allowed him not to be possessed by Lord Heyman's powerful move she also has it's the same kind of immune to possession but not corruption which is good but if he did have a corruption instead of possession on that move it kind of still would have been screwed so then lord hey man just being ever powerful just fear 
And then look, here's the ideal cycle for damage output, like bounty hunt thinking. So boom, nature weakness, <coughs> you gotta get back to her. Then, Irewing's teachings, you go back to her, and then boom, you can do proud and primal, or Amelia's leader. So yes, indeed, this does mean 40 plus 40 to one enemy, because this is nine, this is 80, right? 40 plus 40, okay, so this is just slightly higher, so... I think this has got to be like 75, 70 damage to one enemy, 40 to the rest. That is some fantastic damage output on moderate to one and then moderate to all. We've learned from certain moves like Draco, an amazing uh, attacker, that it doesn't always work that way. Because for Draco, he does insane to one, and then he says, and then to all, when really it's only insane to one, 20% AoE to all. So she's got a powerful AoE on that move. Let's see. What else can I show on her? Um, Sadly, she doesn't have a move to reapply that amazing status caster um, of torture immunity, which is, it really sucks. Torture immunity in her trait is one of the better parts. But yeah, look at this. So I'll show. Um, Let's see how much this does. 68 to him and then 21 to the other one so yeah sounds like i was about right on my calculations so boom deny deny look he can do the torture immunity to all but she can't do it on her own which is kind of a letdown but she's definitely got other little bits to make fu make up for it now as i said it's either double damage or the little weakness move I actually think you should go weakness move now. They're both on a one turn cooldown. But not only does that one do damage. But it lasts for longer. And the effect does more. Nature weakness. You really don't need to be doing d um, double damage plus nature weakness. Um, because that might be overkill. Her stats are high enough right now. To where I believe you don't really need to worry like that yet. So. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah I'm just having fun with it now. Um. Yeah, I think that's about as much as I can show for this monster. Um, let's see that powerful attack. Amelia's leader. Boom. Yeah, she is a great monster, but there's not much to her. A strong attacker. I definitely love, I always, always love. Every time they release a monster with, like, the high raw damage plus multipliers, like her and Chieftain Alarok and stuff like that. I'm definitely going to enjoy her. I'm actually ranking her up right now. Which, you know, getting ranked up by the Omni Crab, high privilege. Um, I'm kidding. I just don't have any better attackers. And maybe that's the same case for you. If so, she's definitely no one to sleep on. Area torture immunity, tough immune to possession. Um, and then high damage with ways to multiply her own damage. She's definitely got it. She's got it going. So that's about it for my video of review of Kiridar Pilgrim. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found it helpful. There wasn't too much to show, but she's got a lot that I like. Um, hope you enjoyed and you hope you found it helpful. Hope you have a great day. Leave a like, comment, and I will respond. Are you going to invest in her? Do you like her? And subscribe to join the Crab Army. We are at 121 subscribers. And that is a massive milestone. Thank you all so much for that. And that's about it for this video. Your favorite Omnius Crab, signing out.